What's up, Duke fans? Uh, we're here back again Tuesday morning. Um, we're here with episode 16 with the winningest college basketball coach of all time here. Uh, this is really the reason we're here at the Brotherhood Podcast. We wouldn't be having this if it weren't for you. So, uh, Coach K, thanks for taking the time to, to be welcome. here today. Super excited to, to talk about everything uh, today from you know what you've been doing since you, uh, since you retired. Hopefully get your thoughts. Uh, last, this past week, you just got to see this new team in action for the first time. We had a, a, a scrimmage, um, so excited to get your takes. Hopefully you can give me some feedback, not be, not be too rough. Do you want uh, me to give you personal feedback or? Uh, I'll, I'll, I, don't need I mean, on you. I need, no, I need all, I need okay. all the feedback. Right. <laughs> um, and uh, talk a little bit about, you know, all the college basketball landscape, but, um, and then hopefully finish with some, some quick hitters if we have the time for it today, but excited to, to have you here. Um, if we could start, um, I just mentioned this is the Brotherhood podcast. This, the Brotherhood doesn't exist without you. Uh, and we had Ninth Wonder on here a few weeks ago, Grand Hill, uh, last week. They both talked about just how incredible the Brotherhood is and how prevalent right. it is, specifically in the NBA. You just saw it this past week with um, the preseason. We're the number one school with 28 guys on NBA training camp rosters. Right. Obviously, there's coaches, GMs. Um, they're just – there's – the Duke players and coaches and the brotherhood is everywhere. Can you talk about um, what it's like for you to see what the brotherhood has become? Yeah, well, we're proud of it, you know, and uh, other people might try to copy it, but it's tough to copy because uh, uh, really I was here as the coach for 42 years, so yeah. Yeah, we created a family mm. and uh, – since me and my wife were here the whole time, everyone, that's a common thread. Yeah. Uh, not just that they've all been yelled at by me or, <laughs> or coached by me, but uh, they became part of our overall family. Mm -hmm. And so in every sense of the word, it is a brotherhood and it's a family. And uh, with John taking, John Shire taking over, John was with me for eight years. Me, we recruited him. He, I mean, he is Duke, and but he's part of the family, and uh, uh, I'm proud of that. We take in in a family, you take care of one another. You're concerned for one another. You, uh, you're with that person uh, during the ups and the downs, yeah. and so I, I I think our guys have really loved it, and uh, I'm glad that it's uh, going to be perpetuated. Uh, through the long, hopefully the long time that John is going to be coaching here. Yeah, and it's just it's been incredible as a player to see so many guys come back. Uh, right, every you know, feels like it's well, every it's week. home. Yeah. and you know, right. One of the things uh, these you know, it started really when we started a fantasy camp, mm -hmm. which is twenty years old now, and we started it primarily to bring back our former players, thirty to forty of them and have them interact with people from all over the country and different, to have them network. Yeah. And all of a sudden that, that there was that, that bond. Dave Bradley's done a great job of perpetuating that yeah. and uh, honoring it and celebrating it. And, uh, but uh, the fantasy camp helped a great deal. And it's like a reunion, yeah. a, a family reunion. And then the current players are at it too. So, you're in, it's like, yeah. You know, when you're a kid, do I have to really go to a family reunion? Yeah. I don't want to do that. But uh, you guys are there, and you see it, mm -hmm. you feel it, and uh, I, I I love it. And yeah. uh, your your podcast helps in perpetuating it. Yeah, just another uh, channel to, to to kind of describe what you're talking about. Right. That that makes me laugh because the you know the the fantasy camp was my first real exposure to. To yeah. Duke and Duke basketball, I was still, I was actually still in school at Northwestern because we were on the courses when we were yeah. late. So you I had guys go late. Late. Yeah, so I came here just for the weekend. Coach Shire asked me, thought it'd be good mm -hmm. to to come here with all the the young yeah. guys, the freshmen coming in, and uh, I remember immediately just being it's stunned. Genuine. But being yeah. just stunned, like sitting down at dinner with two NBA GMs and two scouts, right. you know, that doesn't happen at any other place. So um, I remember being pretty pretty taken back very quickly yeah. by that, but. Uh, quite an incredible experience. Um, can we move into, sure. we just talked about 
um, name and coach, direct coach. So now you're technically retired, although you've stayed very, very busy. Um, can you talk about how these these two years have been? How have you stayed busy? Yeah, well, it's been great. You know, uh, I have a lifetime contract at Duke, not to coach, but to be the amb an ambassador, which <clears throat> Coach Shire is finding out that being the head coach is also being an ambassador. So yeah. I'm really, uh, I've retired from coaching and recruiting. Mm -hmm. uh, still have my office, my office staff, and doing a bunch of things to help Duke obviously behind the scenes uh, to support our program. Yeah. Uh, John and I have a very close relationship and talk frequently. Uh, and you know, that's good for me and it's good for him and it's good, good for the program. Uh, I do a lot of speaking for the Washington Speakers Bureau all over the yeah. country. Uh, I'm a professor at Fuqua yeah. uh, in lecturing. Uh, uh, just spoke to uh, the MBA, the global and the weekend MBA students. Uh, I have my own radio show, yeah. Siri, uh, uh, Sirius XM, the 18th year. Uh, and uh, I advise for the MBA. Yep. Uh, uh, so I've been at their GM meetings and uh, been at a bunch of meetings with them. And, uh, and I spend a lot of time running our, helping to run our nonprofit, the Emily Krzyzewski Center. Uh, we now service about 2,000 kids in Durham, yeah. and uh, and my 10 grandchildren all live within 10 minutes of us. Yeah. So we don't lack for, and, and my <laughs> dog is only 18 months old, yeah. and Co his name is Coach. So uh, I love it, and uh, uh, I'm, uh, I'm busy, happy, and, uh, and really proud of what uh, you guys have done in keeping it going and uh and we're looking forward to uh an even better year yes last year was a really good year but we have a chance to have an even better year this year yeah absolutely so safe to say you've you've stayed busy uh there's a few things i want to touch upon one the the <laughs> consulting position with the nba yeah can you dive into that tell me kind of what yeah. the specifics are obviously it's got to be a little different after spending so many years on the college side of things what's it been like to to be over there now it's exciting and it's very different and you know i didn't want to do tv you know like in a studio games yeah. and actually i wanted to outside of trying to help our program i wanted to get away from college uh college uh, the mm -hmm. leadership and the structure of it is very frustrating for me yeah during my time to uh uh, fight bureaucracy <laughs> and uh, uh, so I wanted to be involved with basketball at the highest level and Adam Silver and I are really close friends the commissioner of the NBA yep. and I didn't want a permanent job with them I didn't want I didn't I wanted to be an independent contractor yeah and have some freedom so we have an arrangement where I would go to meetings mm -hmm. general manager meetings and that and be on zooms and they do things at the highest level. And it's obviously he's the best commissioner, I think, of yeah. all sport. And uh, I learned, I've learned a lot. And I think I've contributed. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we have so many guys in the NBA and a lot of managers who are working in the NBA. And all our guys that are playing now want to be in the NBA. Yeah. And so for me to have... Uh, that connection is good. Yeah, I think I can uh, give advice or help uh, uh, you guys yeah. or future guys. And, but it keeps me uh, thinking at, uh, at the level I want to be uh, thinking at for the sport I love. I mean, I've, I love basketball. Yeah. And, uh, and I got to know the NBA very well. During the 11 years I coached the U.S. team, yep. and Ad, that's where Adam and I became close, mm -hmm. and he was there every step of the way. So, uh, I'm looking forward to the start of the NBA season. Yeah, you know, right here towards the end of the month. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the other thing you touched upon was all the philanthropic efforts, uh, not only in Durham, but I know just recently this past month you hosted the Jimmy V event in in Napa. Right. Uh, raised 21 million. Is that correct? Right. I mean, that's. That's pretty unbelievable. Congratulations. And um, can you just speak about your yeah. philanthropic efforts in general? I feel like 
that almost gets overshadowed by all the basketball success that you've experienced. It's it's almost yeah. not talked about. Well, enough. you know, uh, it's and not to get not to make this a religious broadcast, although you know, it doesn't hurt to have a little bit. To whom much is given, much is expected, mm-hmm. and uh, I've been given a lot. Yep. Uh, just being at Duke, I've been given a lot, and uh, to use it properly. So uh, with the V Foundation, I've been with them since it started. Jimmy and I were like brothers. Coach Valvano and I were like brothers. And uh, 25 years ago, he died 30 years ago. Uh, 25 years ago, we start, they started the wine celebration in Napa. They did not have a host for a while, and then... I took over with my family hosting it. So we've done it for 18 years, wow. uh, except the summers that I coached the Olympic team. Yeah. And uh, uh, over those 25 years, we've raised over $150 million. Wow. And celebrating the 25th anniversary was huge. And we had a great weekend and raised $21 million. Wow. Uh, locally, uh, we started the Emily Krzyzewski Center, named after my mom, mm-hmm. who was an eighth grade education, cleaning yeah. lady in the Chicago Athletic Club in uh, downtown Chicago. Yeah. And uh, we now service 2,000 kids and a uh, staff of 25, a three and a half million dollar budget. And we are ingrained in Durham. Yeah. And uh, we're the college hub mm-hmm. for any kid that wants to get into college. and. Uh, uh, it's gone, it's gone fantastic, and you get involved in a whole bunch of other things, but those are probably the two main ones uh, that I uh, that I'm involved in, and uh, and my family is, and uh, we love it, and whatever we can do to help in the fight of cancer, but also in the fight to help low-income kids get uh, to have educational equity. Yeah. That's that is not happening in our country, and our center hopefully can overcome that some of that educational inequity yeah. that occurs. Yeah, that's uh, that's incredible. Uh, we had Ninth Wonder, like I mentioned, uh, two weeks ago on yeah. the podcast, and he spoke about um, how influential and how how proud he was to see like all the um, participation in the video with the Black Lives Matter movement uh, that that you were in. So. Uh, it's 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 pretty incredible. So yeah, congratulations! Thank you. It means a ton as a and you know and player. You guys are are doing so much with uh, helping the cancer, the dribble uh, yeah, event. Yeah, last week. Yeah, yeah. also, uh, and that's part of you as uh, you know, you're 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 finishing your last year, and uh, to know that that's part of what you should be doing. Yeah, absolutely. And so I, f- I feel our program has done that throughout the brotherhood, yeah. you know, where our guys are good guys yeah. and uh, they recognize they want to be great basketball players, but they want to be great teammates of the communities that, that they're in. So yeah. as much as I'm proud of, you know, how they play, I'm proud of how they get involved. Absolutely. Do you think that feeds into the, the brotherhood? I feel like when we came back and, and see that camp, all these former players and former coaches and, People, they're obviously here and excited to, to you know, be a part of basketball and see that, but they're clearly just also so immersed in helping each other, talking to each other, you know, connecting with each other on, on a personal level beyond basketball. Do you think that's no, it's impact? important? Yeah. It, you know what they are? They're not, uh, it's like coming home. Mm-hmm. Not that this is their only home, but it's one of their homes. Yeah. And when you come home, you let your hair down. You don't have to be the superstar or mm-hmm. the guy playing in Europe or the yeah. GM or whatever. You're a regular guy. Yeah. And everyone talks to each other like a regular guy. And it, it, it's good to get grounded again yeah. because the base of who they are is sensational. Yeah. So ne- never to for, forget that. And also when they go back into what they are normally doing, to recognize that the, there are people that they interact with who are at that, who are trying to get up there. They end up helping m- more. It, the, you know what it is, Ryan? It, they, uh, they, they learn even more, again, about empathy, mm-hmm. that everyone's important. Yeah. And uh, uh, so I, 
it, it it's a great event. Yeah, it, it's not a good event. It's a great event. Yeah. Uh, last and I guess my biggest question uh, that you've been up to since retirement, uh, you talked about uh-huh. um, you retired from coaching and recruiting. I guess I'll go on a limb here and say you probably don't miss the recruiting side. No, of it, I don't at but all. <laughs> do you miss coaching? You know, I don't miss co- I don't miss coaching the. Uh, uh, I, I coached for 47 years, <laughs> over 1,600 games or more. And uh, uh, I, the thing I, I miss is the interaction mm-hmm. with young. Yeah. You know, I've been, you stay young by interacting with young yeah. and energetic. And uh, that's the only thing I, I miss. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I do a lot of speaking and all that, but it's not to a group of 18 to 23 year old <laughs> guys. And uh, in order to do that for over 40 years, you have to be in their world. Mm-hmm. Hopefully they got in your world. Yeah. And, uh, but uh, that was exciting for me. It's really one of the main reasons I stayed in college coaching mm-hmm. uh, my whole career and didn't go, uh, go to the NBA. And, uh, but watching you guys and how energetic you guys have been and, what Coach Shire has done with his staff, and uh, you know, I, I I admire that. I'm happy that that's that that's happening. Yeah. yeah, it's it's funny when you mention that. It makes me think of I'm the oldest guy on this team by a pretty wide margin. Right. And uh, I I catch some flag for in the locker room and being older and and whatnot. But then, you know, all my classes are over a few when the average age for my program getting their MBA is 29. So yeah. that I'm significantly. Um, the youngest person in my program, so it's funny to see it just out. As soon as I leave the lock, leave the locker room, I'm back again to being a young person. I'm able to take some of the. You know, it's an interesting go. thing as you progress as a player, but hopefully, in whatever you're going to do after playing, uh, to remember that the interaction of old and new and young yeah. is an important aspect on any team, yes. especially in business. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's something I, I speak about a lot. Yeah. Uh, there, where you don't segment, you know, uh, I'm only talking to the older. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. for you to actually be involved, that's pretty interesting. I had not thought of it in that way for you. Yeah. But that's, uh, you're learning something that the guys in the locker room don't know. Mm-hmm. But you're also learning something that you're, uh, fellow students in the NBA are, are probably missing out on a little bit. Yeah, it's pretty unique. How about uh, coming to a game this year uh, against Notre Dame, probably first game in, in Cameron that you were uh, a spectator instead of being on the bench? How did that? No, I, I really didn't like it. Yeah. And uh, uh, one, I tried over, during the first year not to have uh, uh, interaction that the public saw yeah. with the program. And to give John and his staff an opportunity, they're, they're like, Coach K's not around, you know, like, or they're, like to give him full, you know, scenery, you know. Yeah, like, yeah. And, uh, and I came, John, Coach Hire asked me to come to that game. Some people say it came to see Coach Bray, who worked for I didn't. I can see Coach Bray in it, so. <laughs> uh, but I, I it, it was uncomfortable for me because uh, one, it was comfortable that the game was close. Yeah. And uh, Mark hit that corner jump yes, yeah, shot yeah. that helped you know help yeah, us yeah. win the game. But uh, it was all, yeah. In today's world, all the cameras, all the phones, and you know. So uh, I'll go to more games this year. But I'm going to sit in a different place, and uh, uh, and then now the further away you get away with away from me coaching, and now John is coaching. I think the easier it'll be uh, to go to to go to a game, and because uh, uh, I want to support. Uh, but uh, I, again, I try to do it behind the scenes, not yeah. not in front of everybody. Where are you thinking of sitting? There's not. Many comfortable seats. You know, where uh, uh, I'm not going to sit where my family sits up in the stands, yeah. but uh, no courtside, but uh, in the corner, courtside where your bent our benches, mm-hmm. not in that corner. Okay. 
Up but in, to, yeah. in the other corner, because where I sat <laughs> uh, with my wife, my wife Mickey for that one game, it was right in front of the band. Yeah, <laughs> and with the cheerleaders right in front, and uh, that was cool because there's excitement, but uh, you didn't. It was very loud. Yep. And uh, and then the cheerleaders are great, but you know I'd rather have them on the other side of the court and, yeah. and have full uh, full vision. So I'm look. I'll see how it works. I wish we had boxes. Yeah. You know I'd, I'd rather do that and be completely out of it. Yeah. Um, how about uh, last year? I know that you hosted some people in your office to watch games, yeah. and that that money raised went to the Emily. Uh, K Center, any plans to do that again this year? We're going to do a couple. We actually did it for the V Foundation, too. Okay. Uh, and uh, uh, raised this, it, you know, it raised uh, for the Emily Krzyzewski Center, we did five or six, and it raised almost $400,000. Wow. And uh, I think five, and four of them when, when you guys were on the road. Okay, yeah. It's, it, yeah. You didn't have to do it with... Uh, when it's a home game, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm doing a couple for uh, both yeah. th this year, and uh, and then I'm going to be out for a while because uh, right after we have a big celebration to kick off our hundredth year here at Duke on January 9th, okay. and uh, I'm going to be a part of that with President Price and his team, but uh, I got to get my ankle replaced. Wow. So I've had both knees and both hips replaced, and but the ankles even more. It's a little bit different, so I'm going to have that done in January. So I'll be uh, I'll be immobile for a while. Yeah. So uh, uh, I'll be watching you guys on TV. <laughs> yeah. How about? But you do. You are in there uh, still lifting weights occasionally yeah. up there. I think uh, I've seen you go up there and bench. I think you. I want to say you um, bench more than Coach Shire. No, Coach Shire well, goes in there and does a couple couple reps of curls, no, and he's, he's, in, he's out. Yeah, no, he's he's 40 years younger, <laughs> and he does a lot more reps. You know what I uh, uh, I like going in there? I try to do it when you guys are not there, or the women's team, and uh, I just try to maintain. Mm. And when you have replacement knees and hips, you have shock absorbers or support. You yeah. know your thighs, your your butt, your, and yeah. so I do enough to try to keep strong in just a, a good maintenance program. And I, I I can't run because of all these parts, so I do I walk, yeah. and just try to stay with it. Yeah. And every once in a while, there'll be one or two of you guys in there, and you inter interact over the weekend. I thought I was going to be alone and. Tyrese was on yep. in the aerobic area, and then he came in, and Jaden yep. uh, came in, and so I, I like that interaction. I've gotten to know you guys, but uh, uh, and that helps. Every once in a while, I know Coach Shire asked me to come when you guys scrimmaged yep. uh, uh, a week ago, and uh, I'll come into certain practices just to get a feel, and then we he and I talk about it. Yeah. And uh, sometimes there's a thing that you can see that you just throw it out and, yeah. and or it confirms something that he already has seen. Yeah. And I like that. And I think he likes it, too. How often? What do you think the frequency of those of those conversations are? You know, uh, X and O wise, there aren't as many, mm -hmm. you know, but it's more like running our our program is like a Fortune 500 company. Yeah. So I think that's the thing. It One, it took a while to build it, yep. but then I constantly was learning about it. You know, Coach Shire is not just a good coach, he's an outstanding coach. Uh, the game comes really easy to him, and he loves it. The business part of it is different. Yeah. And so a lot of times when we talk, uh, it's more about that. Yeah. Or what do you think about this? Or I'm doing this? Or if I saw something, are you thinking of this? And it doesn't mean he doesn't do his own thing, but he might throw something out, like what do you think about it? And I'll give him uh, 
the truth, you yeah. know? Like, uh, boy, that's a great idea. Or, John, are you really going to do that? <laughs> he said, well, I was thinking about it. I said, well, maybe you should <laughs> think a, a little bit more about it. That doesn't happen that much. But, and you know, I love John. We have a, an amazing relationship. Yeah. and uh, But it's been, the base of that relationship has been honesty. And right from the time we recruited them, and uh, uh, so that that's going to continue. And uh, you know, we're lucky to have him as our coach. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you mentioned uh, obviously we're talking about this this upcoming team and this year. You meant you watched uh, a scrimmage last week. What were your overall takeaways? Yeah, it's a different team, uh, and Flip did not play. Yeah. So uh, big piece. Uh, I'm sorry. A big piece. Yeah, well, because he, you know, he, he's going to be put in a position where he touches the ball a lot. Yeah. And so you don't see his impact on other guys. Uh, the enthusiasm is good. I think we're deeper. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not an above-the-rim team. Yeah. You know, and like with Lively last year, uh, especially the last third of the year, uh, he, he was a difference maker f for yeah. us. Uh, he not only blocked shots, but people didn't go in there. Yeah. So uh, actually, Coach Shire mentioned you guys had a referee clinic just beforehand yep. with Brian Kersey, who runs our uh, all our referees. And John was saying something about they're not going to call as many charges. Yeah. That hurts us. Yeah. Uh, because you guys – a practice a couple of weeks before that, you must have taken six charges. Mm. And if those are called five or six blocks. That's a big that, deal. No, it's a big deal. Mm. So I'm concerned a little bit about that. Yeah. Because we have depth. Uh, I think we have more depth, not think, but I know we have more depth on the three perimeter spots. Yeah. And so it'll be a lot more combinations. Okay. And... Uh, you know, they can go, uh, you guys can go big where you would be at the five mm -hmm. and then uh, flip at the four. Uh, uh, but also with flip at the five. Yeah. And then you might be smaller. And uh, so he's, he can go, you guys can go a number of different ways. A, a big thing for you guys, Ryan, is going to be everyone's got to be acceptant of yeah. a versatile role. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And... Last year it was a little bit more defined, mm. you know. There, here's five. You're going to be the sixth guy, yeah. And it's not that way. We're deeper, and so how when you come and the team will look different with different different guys out there. Yeah. Last year we were good, but it looked the same. Yep. Now uh, it it's uh, it can be it can be better. But it's going to take uh, everyone accepting minutes roles. and roles, and the roles will be more versatile depending on who's Absolutely, yeah. who's in the game. How do you figure out those those lineups? Uh, is it something you know when, when you were coaching? Are you trying to figure those out in the preseason? Is it the first couple games of the year? Is yeah. it the whole year? Yeah. Are you messing around and trying to tinker and change lineups to no, figure it's out the whole year? You know because. Uh, you're constantly looking at, at things and you know like you're an older player uh, you improved a lot last year and now you're good we pretty much know who you are yeah and hopefully you stay consistent at the level you're you might get better yeah. but you're with these younger kids you got to adjust to how they improve during the year and not just individually, but their improvement, how it impacts the other players, the interaction of it. So, you know, for me, uh, we were constantly evolving, and a really good team evolves. Yeah. And uh, there can be a, a, a huge evolution uh, in, in this group. Uh, yeah. And you being one of the captains, uh, and congratulations on that. Thank you. And... Uh, uh, that's going to be key, not just in, okay, go over here, help out over here, but 
maybe during a quiet time in a, in a, in a practice or uh, over a meal, uh, letting a young player know, hey, you know, we need you to, to do this, to, to be a mentor a little bit uh, yeah. to them because obviously you're acceptant of any role yeah. that they don't know their roles yet. Yeah. They're going to be learning uh, their roles. You can help them immensely. Absolutely. Outside of um, accepting roles and, <clears throat> and minutes of all that, uh, as a coach that's been to the mountaintop, that's won it five times, what does this team need to do to make it to Phoenix? Well, you got to stay healthy. Yeah. Yeah. Not just physically, but mentally. Mm -hmm. And that means, you know, having a, uh, an attitude where you don't get caught up in your own attitude. You get caught up in a collective attitude. And, uh, uh, I th and I, I think this team uh, individually needs to compete against each other. Yeah. You, you know, like everybody's going to come after us. Uh, the, you know, there's a lot of high expectations for the team, but people have always come after Duke. And uh, you, you, if you don't come after each other in practice, and that's not just when you're scrimmaging, but in the individual drills where I'm going to, if you're a perimeter player, I'm, I want to be the best perimeter player on the team every day. I'm going to come after you. I want you to come after me because the guy I'm going to guard or I have to go against, he's going to come after me. And so... I call it make each other better, make, e, make each other better. And in today's, even more today, uh, kids think of how, you know, the individual instructor, how am I going to get better? The best way to get better is to compete mm -hmm. and have somebody to compete against you uh, individually and collectively. Yeah. Um, yeah, we talked about that a lot last year, and that was for something personally, specifically for me, working with Derek and Flip. Um, <clears throat> that iron sharpens iron. Well, you mentality. helped them. Yeah, you helped them uh, uh, a, a lot. Yeah, and uh, uh, they got better. Not just because of what they did, but you know that was one of the things you brought to the team last year. Was you were there every day, mm -hmm. and uh, you didn't take a day off. And sometimes they did. Yeah, and when you saw that. You attacked them, yeah. you, you know. You made them, you made them look bad sometimes, <laughs> and uh, uh, not just sometimes, but and then they got better. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You know, like uh, we need a team. We need everybody to do that. Yeah. E everybody to do that. The the great teams we've had here did that. Mm -hmm. They they did a good job of that. One hundred percent. You talked about today's world, obviously. Um, uh, the college sports landscape in general, but specifically college basketball, has has gone a little crazy these past few years. Um, can you talk about your perspective of it after uh, decades coaching, now being uh, looking on it from the outside in? Uh, any initial takes, just seeing the transfer portal exploding, uh, NIL being introduced. What is your take on it all? Yeah, what's well, uh, the most tumultuous time? in the history of college sports, not just mm -hmm. college basketball. And we really don't have leadership. Uh, uh, the, uh, I mean, it's hard for me to believe there's not a Pac-12. Yeah. Like, that's ridiculous. And the caretakers of college sports have been the, the conference commissioners of the five major, con the Power Five. Now there's a Power Four. And in these last two years, last couple of years, they didn't work as a team. They worked at developing their own TV and money. Yep. And so it's hurt the sport. Uh, yeah. uh, it's, uh, I think we've done a really good job here because uh, John has continued to do it smart. Yeah. Uh, and it starts with recruiting. Yeah. You know, we haven't, gone to the transfer portal except for grad transfers yeah. and grad tra and so that means we are still that 
place to go if you're the great high school player. Yeah. You're not going to, you know, we, we talked about that. That's a smart thing to do. Mm -hmm. uh, but the grad transfer, like you've been an um, unbelievable addition. Theo John was a great addition. Yeah. You know, like you, gr you bring maturity, hard work, and, and you're good. You know, like you've been the best one. And uh, and you don't get in the way of recruiting lively or yeah it, you know they don't it's smart and then with NIL uh, that's a world that I'm I'm not sure anybody knows yeah uh, and I'm not I don't know if they'll ever get a hand handle on it mm -hmm. uh, but we have to do it to a level where especially you guys it doesn't negatively impact the locker room yeah you know yeah. uh, and uh, because no one's going to share what they do from other schools yeah they do not right yeah. i mean it's not like the nba where you know the salary structure of yeah, every, yeah. everybody and uh so it'll be interesting if the ncaa or whoever runs college sports in the future uh will be able to create some type of template where Everyone knows, you know, what, what's going on. There's more transparency. Uh, I'm a little, uh, a little bit disappointed, or maybe a lot disappointed, that we as a conference haven't come up with, what does the ACC want to do with this? Mm -hmm. And be a leader in it, not wait for Congress or anybody to say no, and work together as... Uh, 30 or 40 school no we don't have that many yet but uh you know where we yeah we, where we're proactive yeah like and share ideas and say for the good of our conference this is what all our membership should be uh doing and there's i don't feel that that's happening i in fact i know it's not happening which yeah. is disappointing mm -hmm. and uh so i don't know uh you know it's a world that i didn't live in yeah. You know, it was just starting with the last year. Paulo probably benefited the most yeah. from NIL, but it wasn't through a collective or yeah. anything like that. And uh, and you know what? I don't want to be involved in it. Yeah, I was going to ask, did you, do you feel fortunate no. that you got out when you did? Yeah, you know, uh, if I was younger and had suc the success we've had, uh, I would definitely consider going to the NBA. Really? Wow. Yeah. yeah. And uh, just because it's it's too much. Yeah. You're constantly recruiting. Mm. Your own players. Yeah, after the season ends, you're recruiting every guy back. Every, you're re recruiting uh, the time for that. And uh, uh, I, I wouldn't, I, I, I don't, I, I, yeah, I wouldn't want to. Do you have any do ideas in terms of where do we go from here? You mentioned more transparency. Do you think that's a route that the NCAA should explore? There was a take uh, on Twitter recently I saw about what you said, like salary transparency. Would it be, would it somehow benefit college athletics if if every, uh, the take was if every person's NIL valuation was public? And obviously I don't know how possible it is right now, but where do you think we go from here? Yeah, well, I don't think as a player I would accept that. Yeah. So I don't think it'll ever, that'll ever happen, mm -hmm. you know, like it does in the pros, yeah. because it's none of your business. Yeah. It, it, you know, if I'm making that, you know, uh, so I don't know how they do it. Yeah. Is is, is uh, what I'm yeah. what I'm saying, and the NCAA really has no uh, oomph, mm -hmm. you know, because they've lost every lawsuit that's been taken against them so their antitrust stuff is the weakest yeah. uh, that there is in sport and so people can do a bunch of stuff we're going to hold you accountable well, I'm going to take you to court yeah. and you know what I'm going to win yeah. and so it's like a house built a house of cards it, yeah. it, it doesn't have it, it doesn't have oomph yeah yeah, that's one of the things that uh, I've been, you know, nervous about. Not really personally, but at Northwestern when that first when it first came out, you know, it was so separate between uh, 
and I also, each individual is personal and I have right. NIL in the school. And one of the things that they sat us down and told us was be very careful about what you're doing because there'll most likely be some sort of landmark case that creates the precedence for this. And now two years later, it still feels like the wild, wild west, but <clears throat> there's always that looming. It feels like at some point, somebody's gonna get busted for something that makes it the norm. Yeah, you know, the, Ryan, the, I don't see how you can take back what the players are doing right mm -hmm. now. Yeah. You, instead of looking at it as a problem, yeah. say, this is the way it is. And it may lead to uh, where every student athlete is an employee for yeah. the this, this school because I think there are a lot of administrators who would want that really? because then you know. Yes. Yeah, you, yeah. You, you, you see, you know. Now you don't, you don't know. But how do you bring that back? Yeah. And uh, the NCAA is looking for Congress to help and... Uh, you know, my, my thing is, I don't have a lot of confidence in Congress and a lot of things. Yeah. Yet alone them spending a lot. They'll, they'll do stuff to, and make decisions based on how it'll, it'll affect them staying in office. Yeah. Not how it will help college That's athletics. Fair. So I, I, uh, I, and you know what? It, when you have a big problem, you have meetings, right? Yeah. Well, who would run the meeting? I mean, you don't, you, you don't know. I'm just... Yeah. And who would be at the meeting? You, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and uh, that's a hell of a way to run a r railroad, I'll tell you that. <laughs> it's... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah I, I teach leadership and teamwork, and wow, there's, uh, there's a big void. There's yeah. a big void. Yeah. Well, you got out. You got out in time. Um, okay, well, we've taken up a ton of your time. We're going to wrap up with a few quick hitters, okay. uh, questions for you off the court. So first thing that, that, that comes to mind for you here, do um, you have a favorite movie? Legends of the Fall. Wow, okay. I love awesome. everything about it and the music especially. Yeah. Are you a big war movie guy, I assume? Maybe? Nah, even yeah. though it's in the military. Yeah. I'm more comedy, okay. drama. Nice. Uh, uh, but the war movies are, are, are good. They're... I don't know if I have a favorite one, but yeah. I'm a big, I have a big fan of the military. Yeah. They're the, they are the best team Absolutely. in our country. Yeah. Um, uh, a TV show you're currently watching? Uh, we're actually binging on uh, The Bear. Yeah, I was it asked about that. Yeah, and uh, we binge on that. We've gotten behind in Yellowstone, so okay. we're, what, and uh, we watch, my wife, like older movies. Uh, yeah, okay. And uh, and I, I still like watching sports yeah, of most of the time. That's the best reality uh, reality TV. Uh, the Bear, I've watched the, the Bear as well. How does that uh, occur? Do they reach out to you or do you just... No, you know, they use a book. Uh, we wrote a great book over 20 years ago. Yeah. It's a, one of the better books on leadership. I did it with Don Phillips, who uh, uh, written big-time books on leadership. And... The lady who has the lead yeah. in the bear has used the book as a guide to build their restaurant yeah. team. And I found out about it just, I got texts from people <laughs> saying, you know, your book's on the, on yeah. the bear. I said, what the hell the bear is? And uh, that's my middle daughter's nickname, the bear. Wow. And, uh, uh, and then uh, they actually talk about the book. Yeah. It ends up that that the weed uh, lady uh, and that uh, is represented by CAA, oh, okay. and so am I. And uh, so I just sent her an autograph nice. book, uh, Weeding with the Heart. And I told uh, I told my agent, I said, uh, you know, in the future, if they keep going, why don't I do a cameo? You yeah. know, like go and have a meal, yeah. maybe, uh, or yeah. you know, just discourage because it's in my hometown, Chicago, yeah, in, yeah. the Bear. And uh, and it's a heck of a show. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, talking about restaurants, you have a go-to Durham restaurant. Uh, Nana Steak for me okay. uh, yeah. with Graham and Brett. They they just opened a new one, Seraphin. Yeah. And uh, but there are a lot of what you can't believe. 
how much Durham has changed for the better yeah. in the 40-something years we've been here. It's a, I think it's the best city in, in, North, North, uh, in North Carolina. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, favorite place to vacation? Well, we like Vegas, yep. and that's where we did our training camp for U.S., and uh, Mrs. Wynn, Elaine Wynn, is our best friend, and so we had to win. But with family, we go down to figure eight, okay. or we go to Lake Gaston. Uh, the best vacations are, we're a close family, yeah. is with all of our grandkids and our, our three daughters and their husbands. Yeah, nice. Uh, you're picked to win the World Series. You know, this you yeah, I, I think the Diamondbacks. Okay. Well wow. and I'm not I actually said it before the playoffs. I watched them kill the Cubs in yeah. September. And we should have been Cubs should have been in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. And they play it more old school. They run, they steal, they bunt. They're uh I'm not sure they're a complete analytics team. Yeah. And uh, I, I really, and then they knocked off the Dodgers. Yeah. And, then, uh, uh, and then the Rangers are hot. Okay, yeah. The Rangers are hot. And I won't go against the big Duke fan, Bryce Harper, yeah. from the Phillies. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing that the Phillies and the Diamondbacks, yeah. instead of the Braves and the Dodgers. Yeah. Uh, those it's are pretty, two huge upsets yeah, in it's, baseball. It's cool to see. Uh, best, it's a loaded one. Best game you've witnessed in person as a fan? Any basketball game or any sports game in general? Yeah, I haven't witnessed a lot. I've been at a lot. Yeah. No, I, I, I can't even think of we'll one. Go, how about best concert or show you've seen in person? Uh, I, I like Broadway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we just got back from going to see with our daughters and uh, four shows. Uh, and Juliet shucked uh, Sweeney Todd and uh, uh, A Beautiful Noise. Oh. And I liked Aunt Juliet the best and shucked. And uh, but uh, Les Mis is probably my favorite of yeah, all of time. Yeah. And I love live entertainment. We go to Deepak a lot. Yeah. And every time I watch a musical, when I coached, I would walk out saying, they do that for two hour, two and a half hours, and my guys can't run a damn <laughs> out-of-bounds play. <laughs> Actually, we were at Deepak uh, and saw MJ, okay. you know, Michael oh, Jackson, yeah. and Jaden was there, uh, shoot. Really? And so at intermission, I told him that. I said, I watch you guys practice. You can't run a damn out-of-bounds <laughs> play. Watch what these people are, are doing yeah. uh, every, every second up there. Yeah, they memorized all that. Uh, very last one. Most memorable motivation tactic you use while coaching? Everybody here uh, talks a lot about different stories of you bring up, whether it be movie clips or anything else. Is there is there a favorite or a go-to you had? Not a favorite. You know, like a lot of people think there's uh, you have seven or eight different speeches you give. Yeah. Uh, I think the main thing is is to personalize with the player or the team and the moment yeah. and be genuine. So I would hope that my stuff with player, team, and moment was always, I think it was always genuine. Yeah. And where I thought it was the truth. And you have to temper as you move along how you did it. Yeah. You know, what was good and allowed in the 80s and 90s, <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, it's not what you do today. But you know what, overall, uh, we held each other accountable. Mm -hmm. And accountability is not a thing that's alive and well yeah. as much in our society. And so that's one of the things I had mentioned earlier in the podcast where you communicate and hold each other accountable. Yeah. If you do, you have a greater chance of using the talent and the motivation that uh, you have individually because it, it it brings that together. Accountability is a huge, huge part of being a winner. Yeah, I Well, that's the last uh, quick hitter question I had for you. I know you have a, a million things going on, um, so can't thank you enough for being here. Right. Uh, we appreciate your time. Like I mentioned, the, the Brotherhood podcast, uh, it doesn't exist without 
everything you've done here for, for your school. So thanks for being here. Thanks for, for everything you've done, obviously. And uh, hope to see you uh, around the gym soon. Yeah, well, good luck. And, and you, you've done a great job with this. And uh, it does give our fans uh, uh, and people who aren't our fans <laughs> a chance to learn more about uh, uh, our program. Yep. And uh, it, uh, it, I think we've been a program of plural pronouns. Mm -hmm. It's not mine, it's not I, it's not me, it's ours. Yep. And so you've done a good job with, uh, with, with doing this, po our, po our podcast. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Well, I'll uh, keep doing my best. All, All right. right. All right. Thanks, Coach. <laughs>